how to update older fall dresses for stylish new outfits. Welcome, my name is Priska, and I make tutorials to help you develop your personal sense of style. If you're new here, you should know that my style is colorful, curve flattering, and comfortable for warm weather. You should also know that I like to keep a smaller wardrobe of versatile pieces that are high quality, so that's why we're updating 10 of my dresses outfits instead of buying a whole new wardrobe. Some of these dresses are over five years old, so they've definitely seen some various fashion trends, but let's update them for this year. Starting with a very outdated look that needs some restyling. This first dress is at least from 2018, maybe older. So it's a really good example of how you can update your older dresses to create new outfits. The first outfit I wanna show you is actually the outdated look. So I'm going to add these little booties, which about 10 years ago, booties and dresses were such a vibe and having that gap where you're showing your leg really truncates the length of the leg, so I would not recommend it. Secondly, the oversized handbag and the headband, it just totally looks outdated. It's not the booties that are outdated. These are actually new this year and they're my favorite boots, but the way that they're being styled is outdated. So instead I'm going to add some knee high suede black boots. These are several years old, but the updated version I will link down below if you're interested. Um, next I'm going to show two different outfits with these different belts. The first one is a lavender belt from Free People and it's been such a game changer in my wardrobe. I always thought the accessories should be neutral, but more lately I've been enjoying the colorful accessories to bring some pizzazz to an outfit. Next I'm going to add a little fedora, which is just such a cute little look because the western style belt and the boots. And lastly, a handbag. Now I kind of need a daytime black handbag, I don't have one, so we're going to settle for this evening clutch. I'm just noticing I should have put a piece of fashion tape on this belt to keep that extra length from flapping around, so please just ignore that. Anyway, that's the final outfit and definitely a new way to style this dress that looks modern for 2023. Someone's been watching way too many Ralph Lauren runway shows. For this next outfit variation, I'm going to swap the lavender belt for a black belt. And I think that looks really gorgeous, but then with the fedora, it just feels like too much. Here's a tip. Don't overdo your accessories, especially if they all match. Take a final look before heading out the door and decide if you want to add a piece to your outfit or take one away. In this case, I'm going to lose the fedora and I feel like this outfit is now giving just enough without being overly matchy. With this dress, I wanna show you that you don't need to reinvent the reel every time you make an outfit. It's better to have a stellar outfit that you repeat or wear just slight variations of than to have a whole bunch of varying outfits that aren't very good. Like, would you rather eat a variety of lettuces or a steak? So here's a dress that I've worn many, many times in the summer. With this first outfit variation, I'm showing you what not to do. And that is going full monochrome. It's not that monochrome outfits are bad, it's that this particular look just has no variety, no interest. So instead, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I add just a pop of interest with a pattern textured handbag. Much better. However, I am not in the habit of wearing six inch platform shoes on a regular basis. So instead, here's a realistic fall outfit. I've got some low heel strappy sandals, a little suede like jacket and a headband. So if you thought the last time I wore a headband that it looked outdated, it's the way that the whole outfit came together. With this look, you can see that it doesn't look outdated because the styling is modern. When choosing a handbag, select one for the accent that your outfit needs. This handbag really provides some color, some pattern, some texture, and some shine with the hardware. So it's filling all those gaps. The second variation I wanna show you is with knee-high boots. Now, these boots are going to provide a nice bit of color and some shine because they're a smooth leather. And this is a realistic fall outfit on a warmer fall day. Now, with this outfit, I can definitely do the brown leather handbag. That's my everyday carry but I kind of like the pattern more. Just adding a little bit of pattern to the outfit makes it so much more interesting. So this is the final look for the second variation of a realistic fall outfit. Mm -hmm. 
Whenever I talk about style rules, I want you to think of them as guidelines to experiment with. So here's a new style rule I wanna teach you. It's called the sandwich rule. By wearing the same color on top as on bottom in your outfit, you're going to add cohesion to the outfit and I think even make you look taller. So with this outfit, this burgundy headband does complement the dress and it looks fine. But what if we swapped out the headband for a brown one that matches the boots? By doing that, you're creating that sandwich effect of brown on top and bottom, and I think it really does make you look taller because you're defining the top and bottom of your height. This is a cute outfit, right? I mean, we've got really good structure. It has this faux wrap detail, a rich purple color, and some poppin' lip gloss. But something is missing. We need to pop a pattern. So I'm going to tie this little headscarf onto my handbag. Not only does that add pattern, but it also adds movement, which makes this structured dress feel more dynamic and playful. To fix fall outfits that are falling flat, you can add an accent like a patterned accessory, a contrasting texture like the bag or the shiny boots, a pop of color with some lipstick, or a sleek hairstyle. These small accents are what take an outfit from just okay to super stylish. In this video, I'm only showing you three of my pairs of boots. I have a few more than that, but I probably could get away with having two pairs, a pair of booties that I wear with jeans and a pair of tall boots that I wear with dresses. The only reason why I have a pair of brown tall boots and black tall boots is because I am a style educator. So I need a little bit more variety to show you how to mix your pieces. But if you're shopping for tall boots over this fall or winter season, and you're trying to decide between brown or black, I have an unusual rule for you. Now, if you're wearing all black outfits, probably a pop of color in brown or even like my burgundy boots is going to be much more intriguing for your outfit. So unless like gothic chic is your style, try for a pop of color with your shoes, with your handbag and other accessories. Another difference between my tall boots is that the brown pair is a shiny leather and the black pair is a suede leather. But you don't need a black suede pair, a brown suede pair, a black shiny pair, a brown shiny pair. You don't need all these different shoes. What you need to know is what's going to work best with your wardrobe. Now, when it comes to choosing a texture for your boots, I think it's most important to know what textures are missing from your outfit. So in fall, a lot of times I find that we're wearing duller textures, things like sweaters or jeans or suede, in which case a shiny pair of boots would add a nice change of texture. So you can shop for boots that will supply the accent that's needed with most of your fall and winter wardrobe, whether that is color, texture, pattern, or shine. Now, assuming all of that made sense, let me know down in the comments what type of boot works best with your wardrobe. I'm just interested to see, are people more interested in brown, black, another type of color, and what type of texture of boots you like to wear. Here's an example of a dress that I've worn in spring, summer, fall, and winter for years now. This dress is light blue, which leans towards spring summer, but it has the black leopard print, which can definitely be played up for fall and winter. So I'm going to emphasize that with some tall knee high suede boots, a black fedora with a dark hat band and a black mini backpack. In the winter, I'll just add some tights and a long cardigan. By choosing darker accessories, you can bring a fall tone to a versatile dress. You've seen this dress many times before, but I don't think I've ever explained why the turquoise necklace makes all the difference in this outfit. This is another style guideline called the three color rule. So your first color is going to make up 70% of your outfit. Your second color is going to make up 20% of your outfit and your third color is only 10%, just a very small little pop of color. So as we look at this outfit, you can see the black in the outfit is the primary color. It's making up most of the outfit. The secondary color is brown. It's the boots, it's the handbag, and it's making up just a bit of the color of the outfit. And then the last little pop of spice is that 10%. It's that turquoise necklace and bam, that is much more interesting.
here's a black tank dress that's absolutely shapeless on me. Let me show you what it looks like when you have a stylish outfit that is missing the waist flattering detail. To this outfit, I'm adding my black shiny knee-high boots and a suede crop jacket. It's okay, but let me show you three better variations of this outfit. The first one is with this brown waist belt that's going to divide the outfit between top and bottom, which is much more figure flattering. Then I'm going to unbutton a couple of the buttons on the bottom, which will allow for a little bit more movement and a little spicy peek at my kneecap. Lastly, I'll finish it off with this pattern handbag, which completes the look and makes the neutral outfit not boring. Now the second variation of this outfit I wanna show you is with a red handbag because red is the biggest trend for fall. However, since this handbag is worn close to the waist, I think it kind of clashes with the brown belt. So I swapped it out for a black belt. Now it still feels a little bit like something's missing. Oh yeah, lip color. I can really tie in the color of the handbag by changing out this pink tone lipstick for more of a red tone. I've been wearing the Ilia Moisturizing Tinted Lip Balm in several different colors over the last couple of years, and I absolutely love it. It's nicely pigmented without drying out your lips at all. With this neutral outfit, I think the lipstick really needs to pop, and I like the way this has come together. For the last outfit, I want to go with something that's a little bit more appropriate for the weather I currently experience, <laughs> and so I swapped out the boots for some strappy sandals. However, I still have this light jacket on and a cute little leather wrap belt. I'll finish out this outfit with the pattern handbag again. And here's something I can actually wear for fall in Florida. I'm going to keep all the accoutrements from the previous outfit and just swap out the base of the dress, creating a tonal outfit. Do you prefer wearing complementary colors or tonal outfits? Tonal is more sophisticated, peaceful, and quiet generally, while complimentary is more stylish, vibrant, and fun, again, generally. And there's not a wrong or right answer, it's really just what resonates with you personally, and that's the beautiful thing about developing your personal sense of style. You find out what resonates with you, and you can vary that depending on how you feel or what environment you're entering. With this ivory maxi dress, I'm going to create two outfits. The first one is completely tonal. I felt like this hat was just a little too much, so I'm dialing it back down, taking away one piece, and I think this final outfit looks much better. As we roll into the winter season, I'll swap the sandals for tall boots and add a pop of pattern with a leopard belt. Lastly, adding my faithful everyday handbag, here's a final look at something I'll be wearing throughout the winter season. For this final fall dress, I want to tie it all together, all the tips we've learned from making tonal outfits, to fixing outfits that are falling flat, to the sandwich rule. So for this outfit, I'm starting with this linen dress that includes a waist flattering detail which creates an hourglass shape. To this outfit, I am adding a brown headband and my brown leather boots, which applies the sandwich rule. Lastly, I'm adding a little bit more texture with a clutch that has this crocodile print, and that's the first variation on the zebra print dress. Secondly, I'm going to swap the brown accessories for black ones, adding this fedora that is just so cute. Obviously, I'm obsessed with it. And if you picked up anything from this video, I hope it is that you can experiment with your style. Try out different pieces, play with the trends, figure out what you like to wear, and that's going to help you get grounded in your sense of style. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then watch this one next. I'll see you next week, but until then, take care.